No would have believed security guard James if he didn't have video evidence of what had happened that night. He'd witnessed many horrifying things while working at the mortuary for the past couple of months, but a young woman basically rising from the dead easily topped that list, and he was not going to be dealing with this alone. The police first thought that James was making a prank call. A woman coming back from the dead at the mortuary? Yeah, right. They'd heard a lot of questionable statements, but nothing as stupid as this before. However, James had the security footage to prove his claims. Upon seeing it, the officers couldn't get to the mortuary quick enough. James had kept all the doors closed, so the woman dead or alive had to still be in there. What she was doing, nobody knew, but the officers were determined to put a quick stop to this madness. The police busted inside the mortuary, and it didn't take long before they found the woman. But what they saw would leave them scarred forever. How did this woman come back from the dead? What had happened to her, and what did the police encounter inside the mortuary? There's not much scarier than night shifts at a morgue. Security guard James had been working here for months now, but he still didn't feel completely comfortable between all the dead bodies around him. And this particular night, something would happen that made sure he never would. A young woman's body was wheeled into the morgue. She died a few hours before and was brought straight to the mortuary. The coroner didn't want to tell James what had happened or why he took such an interest in the case. All he did was instruct James not to look at the cameras in the operating room. James thought this was all a bit odd. The coroner usually did autopsies during the day between his working hours and definitely not in the middle of the night. Why wasn't he allowed to look at the camera footage? It wasn't as if he hadn't seen a dead body before. James helped the coroner bring in the woman's body, but as soon as they were done, the coroner ordered him to get out and go on his break. But that wasn't going to happen. James had gotten even more curious about this case and was definitely going to look at the footage, but he later wished he didn't. He walked out of the room and pretended to go outside, but instead turned around and quietly walked to his booth. The coroner fell for his tactics and didn't suspect a thing. James sat down on a scene and looked at the screens, but nothing could have prepared him for what was about to happen that night. He watched as the coroner walked around the body not really looking at her. He arranged all his knives and some other tools on a table next to her. It finally looked like he was about to make his first incision when he suddenly stopped and abruptly left the room. This was very confusing to James. He waited for the coroner to come back, but after 15 minutes, he was still nowhere to be seen. James looked at all the security screens, but the coroner wasn't inside the morgue anymore. He rewound the footage and noticed the coroner leaving the building, but why? After another 10 minutes, James decided to investigate. What if something happened outside? The odds were small because of the low crime rates, but still. What if there was more to this story? What if this was all connected to the body? All these questions filled James' head as he slowly walked to the front door. He pushed the door open and shone his flashlight into the darkness. It was quiet and pitch black outside. He only heard the rumble of the building's air conditioning. He didn't notice a vehicle in the parking lot that wasn't there before. He was about to head back inside when he heard a strange noise. Hello? He yelled. Someone there? But no one answered. James shrugged and headed back inside. He closed the front door and locked it behind him. This way, if the coroner returned, he'd have to call James to be let in. James walked through the empty hallways initially to go back to his booth, but something changed his mind. The thought of the mysterious body lying in the empty room made him change his course. He walked past the door to his booth and straight to the autopsy room. His heart was racing in his chest as he reached for the doorknob. He took a deep breath and swung the door open. There she was, lying on the cold autopsy table. James had never seen a dead body before, in real life at least. He watched a lot of crime movies, but at the morgue, he only saw the bags the bodies were in. James looked at the woman's pale skin. She looked so peaceful, but it wouldn't last long. He walked around the table, but kept a safe distance. He didn't want to risk tampering with evidence. Being in this room without the coroner was bad, but having his fingerprints on her skin would be even worse. He stayed in the room for a couple more minutes, but then something happened. As James walked back to the door, he noticed something about the body. The woman's arms had been lying straight next to her body the whole time, but suddenly they were a bit arched. That wasn't possible, was it? James hoped he imagined it, but there was only one way to find out. He walked back to his booth at a fast pace, but just as he was about to open his door, the doorbell rang. This startled James and his heart started racing again. He hesitantly walked to the front door and asked who it was. No answer. James slowly pushed the door open, but there was no one there. This evening was getting weirder by the minute. James hurried back to his booth and sat back in his seat. He turned around to the screens and searched for the autopsy room, but he failed to find it. Strange, it should be on here. He looked again and suddenly realized what was going on. The autopsy room could be seen on one of the screens, but something was different. While he'd been looking at a recording of the woman lying on the operation table, that table had now moved to a different spot in the door. James could barely believe his eyes. He quickly started checking the data if not by chance, a recording of yesterday had started playing because the current footage was missing. It was rare, but it had happened before. But he was quickly able to determine that the footage was in fact live and James felt his heart sing. What could have happened there? Maybe the table with the young woman had started drooling when he closed the door behind him. There was one way to find out, and that was to play the footage back. Back to when he himself could be seen on it, as something must have happened after that. And he didn't have to record long, as even before he got back to where he was still in the room, James had the answer he was looking for. But it was probably the possible answer that scared him the most. 
Even though the footage was not great quality, you could clearly see the body moving. The young woman was moving from side to side on the operating table, which caused the table to move. James knew that people could still have muscle spasm after death, but not so long after their passing, and definitely not this consistently. There had to be another explanation. As it turned out, the woman was not dead at all. The accident she was in nearly left her in a coma from which she managed to wake herself. It was a very gross mistake for the doctor on the scene not to see this immediately. The police quickly transported her to a hospital to get the car she needed.